Belto Charger. Compressor. Lower. Supercharger. Superchargers are basically air compressors that scream like a banshee as they shove more oxygen in your engine so it can make more power. But wait, don't turbos do that too? They do. We already talked about turbos, and you can check that video out. Technically, turbos are really just another type of supercharger. They're originally known as turbo superchargers before everybody realized that was way too many syllables to say every time. Turbo just sounds cooler. These days, we use the name superchargers for engine air compressors that aren't turbo. But if turbos and superchargers do the same thing, well, what's the dang difference? Yeah! Turbos are driven by an engine's own exhaust gases, and superchargers are mechanically driven by belts that are driven by the engine. Both of them are considered dynamic compressors, where air gets accelerated to high speed and then gets slowed down to increase the pressure. Air draws into an impeller, and centrifugal force flings it out in a compressor housing where the speed gets compressed into high pressure instead. More air, more gas, more boom. Centrifugal superchargers are small and relatively easy to bolt on, but the power delivery, well, it's kind of peaky. Once they get spinning, the centrifugal force really takes off and the supercharger can churn through air amazingly fast. Since this kind of supercharger works like a turbo, it has the same concern. Most notably, it takes a little time to spool up and they don't tend to work well at low RPM. But guess what? What? There's other kinds of superchargers. I'm talking about positive displacement superchargers, and there's two main kinds of those. One is the twin screw supercharger, sometimes called a Lysholm, and it moves the same amount of air per revolution no matter how fast things get spinning. That means you get instantaneous and consistent boost at any RPM, even right off the line. Inside the twin screw supercharger are, wait for it, two big screws! They're slightly conical rotors. One is male and one is female, and they interlock as they rotate. Intriguing. The action draws air from an inlet at the back of the supercharger. The air compresses as it moves through the female rotor, which tapers down toward the front to get shot into the intake. Once it gets to the intake, it's more dense air. More air in the same space can take more gas and make more boom. The second kind of positive displacement supercharger, and by far the most popular, is the Roots type supercharger. Quest loves in the house. And they can get pretty big. Think Mad Max. Roots was the absolute OG supercharger design, and it was first patented by Philander and Francis Roots in 1860. They created it to help ventilate blast furnaces and mine shafts. And it turns out, Roots superchargers make excellent fans. Then, Gottlieb Daimler of Daimler-Benz patented it for use on internal combustion engines. The first supercharged cars were Mercedes compressor models that went on sale in 1923. Yeah, compressor with a K is not some new age marketing scheme. It's a hundred year old marketing scheme. We buy golf clubs! Inside the Roots supercharger, there's two spinning rotors with enmeshed lobes. But unlike the twin screw, these are identical symmetrical rotors. Air gets trapped in the spaces between the lobes as they rotate, moving it around the outside of the rotors from the inlet at the top to the bottom of the supercharger. Besides rotor shape, the biggest difference between twin screw and root supercharger is that the air doesn't get compressed inside the roots charger. They get blown together by the rotor and into the engine. That is why they're called blowers. Whoa. Compressed air gets hot, remember? And that makes it want to spread out. Turbos usually send the compressed air out to an inner cooler to cool it off. But superchargers are usually mounted right over the intake of an engine. So their intercooler is usually right there too. A liquid coolant passes through to cool off the intercooler and the compressed air cools off right before it enters the engine. I'm gonna go get it. This is a 2018 Roush Performance Phase One Supercharger. 
Roush has been in the performance engineering business for over four decades. And this kit for the 2018 Mustang GT is their latest innovation in supercharger. Where most Roots blowers have three lobes and a 60 degree twist, this kit features twin four lobe rotors twisted to 170 degrees, providing a more efficient, more powerful system. The fourth lobe added helix angle, that means twist, and these uniquely designed input and output ports provide better thermal efficiency, more efficient airflow, and improved noise and vibration characteristics. Nice thinking, guys! Because the supercharger is driven off the crankshaft, air is constantly being moved, and a huge amount of air ends up stacking into the intake, no matter what speed you're going. Either a twin screw or a roots effectively makes an engine act like it's got bigger displacement. So throttle response is just like what you'd expect on a naturally aspirated car. That means no less. No lag! No lag! We measure superchargers by how much air they can move with one rotation. The R2650 Roush Performance Phase 1 Supercharger here gets its name because it can move 2,650 cubic centimeters of air into the engine each time it performs a full 360 degree rotation. At 2.65 liters, this is the biggest Roush Phase 1 kit ever. You guys want to see what 2.65 liters looks like? You're doing great, Mark. Just a little bit more. That's a lot of, that would be a lot of air. Same matter can occupy some space. This is how much air that blower can get into your engine with just one revolution. Since you can't just blow more air in and call it a day, automotive performance companies that make superchargers also make them available with kits. A performance kit has the other things you need to help these blowers do their jobs without screwing everything up. This Roush kit is what's called a complete supercharger kit because it comes with the supercharger, custom aluminum upper and lower intake manifolds, an air to water intercooler, and an ECU upgrade. I mean, that is a lot of stuff, but it's because you're changing a lot of variables. These components are designed, engineered, and tested to work seamlessly. And the best part is, it also gets you a ton of power. This blower, properly installed, has 240 horsepower and 180 foot pounds of torque for a total of 700 horsepower and 610 pound-feet. Hot damn! And if you get installed by a dealer or an ASE approved technician, it's got a three-year, 36,000 mile warranty. That is nuts! Supercharger! Subscribe to Donut. It means a lot to us. And the more of you that subscribe, the more cool stuff we get to do with you. This was on blowers. You guys asked for that. What do you guys want to see? You like learning about superchargers? You'll love learning about turbochargers. You like things that go fast? Check out this episode of Wheelhouse, where no one talks about his buddy. Oh, guys, we got merch. You know what's new? Sick! Skateboard! Check it out. Shop.donut.media. Follow me on Instagram, at BidsBardo. Follow Donut, at Donut Media. Don't tell my wife I still skateboard. She worries.